Hey guys, Jen here with Serenity Hill Farmstead. I'm in my truck. <laughs> Mark's got the kids out uh, hunting rabbits right now, and I need to do the chickens. They're out scratching and having fun, even though it is so bitter cold outside. It's actually a beautiful day out. You see, it's really sunny out, but it is super cold because it's like 18 mile an hour winds, which makes it like feel like sub zero, even though it's about 15 degrees outside. So, um, my plan today, because it was not supposed to be this cold, it was supposed to be about freezing or a little above freezing, my plan was to give the coop a little bit of a clean out. Uh, we do a deep litter mulch in the winter. That works really well for our chickens because we do not heat our coop. Uh, if you guys have been watching for a while, you know that the, our property here is off-grid as of right now. So it means our, our chickens are living the off-grid life right now. Uh, we don't heat it. We don't have heated waters. There is no electricity going to that coop. So how we keep them warm in winter is we give them a good wind block and we do deep bedding. And how I do that deep bedding, I will go over with you in a second. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about it first before I go out into the elements where it is super windy and you may not hear me. <laughs> so this is actually only our second winter with chickens. We've done meat chickens before and we have not had to overwinter them. Last year was our first year having to overwinter winter chickens, having a laying flock. And this is our second year and our flock has doubled in size and so is our space for them. Uh, we have the original coop and if you guys wanna see what our coop build looks like, it's actually a chicken tractor. It is now currently stationary because I physically cannot move a chicken tractor anymore. Thank you, AS, it's good stuff. So now that we have a static run, actually the way we winterize them doesn't really change much because we just made that chicken coop a stationary run. It, it's very, very heavy duty and it was really easy just to kind of butt it up against our barn. And I'll show you that in a second too. When we designed the chicken tractor, we designed it in a way where it was gonna be easy to winterproof it, winterize it, weatherproof it, is what I'm trying to say. So all we do is pretty much take six mil plastic, put it over the top of it, block around where any kind of wind is gonna come, and we leave the top part of the coop door uh, open so that we have ventilation. Very important to have good ventilation for your chickens, but you don't wanna give them drafts. So that's why we leave the top open and leave the bottom, everything at their level closed off. And before I go out there and show you guys so you can get an actual visual of what I'm talking about, I want to talk about the mulch. Now, what we use is pine shavings. I get flake shavings from Tractor Supply. I get the big bags of them. Uh, I do one bag whenever it's necessary. And lately, with our flock of about 20, we have been doing probably every week and a half, I'm putting a new bag down. They do have a barn and they've got their run. So they've got a little more space to spread out, but they like to pretty much just hang out in the run. So that's a lot of chickens in one smaller space. And normally that would not be enough space for them, but I let them do what they're gonna do. There is a hawk. Good boy, Speck. Good boy. Look at that rooster. He did his job. Good boy. You want this? know what this is. Hawk is 
Now we're gonna keep an eye on that hawk. Well, that was fun. Can you see the eagle? Heavy predator load today, guys. Oh. Well, our rooster is doing a great job of chasing our hens back in the coop, calling them to avoid them, avoid a hawk. Um, as soon as everybody relaxed a little bit, he came inside to eat and an eagle showed up. So I think I'm just gonna leave him inside the coop and we'll talk about our deep mold system while you can see him in it. When I bring in new mulch, I like to put it here in the center of the coop and it's like this. This is what it looks like when I get it out, the flakes. Oops, sorry, it's not food. And what happens is, is that basically acts like a diaper and it soaks up all of the wetness in their droppings. They don't urinate, they just poop, but sometimes they'll have a really wet uh, poop and that, that has, adds more moisture in here also. And that breaks it down further and after a while, you get really, really good compost. What is that, Miss Lady? Red? Eggs don't belong here. Excuse me, Speck. That does not belong here, does it? What is that? No, this is not your lunch. The issue that I have with the deep mulch is right here by the waterers. Because having a waterer is just not not conducive to uh, our to our winters here. So I use these rubber buckets. So what I'll do to fix that problem is just take a rake and rake this in, rake the wetter stuff into the drier stuff, let them work it, and then I mix it in with a bag of dry stuff. Don't see. I think the eagle has moved on. Man, that thing came in fast. We have a lot of eagles around here which are beautiful to watch, but not when they're coming out hard and fast for your chickens. Okay, so here's our barn. It is a work in progress. It is not done. <laughs> that was an open spot. We wanted to cover it up, but I ran out of metal to do more. So it is what it is. It's very thrown together. In the spring, we'll end up taking all this stuff down or the summer, whenever we get to it. The house is the priority, but we'll take the plastic off and we'll put metal on it and make it match our shed. But for now, we use pallets and just recycled a whole bunch of... Uh, this requires two hands. And all of this is made of pallets. If you want to see how we did this, I got a video for you to see. How come we have no eggs today, ladies? Huh? There's no eggs. Not a single egg. Not a one. Why? So inside the barn here, you can see it looks totally different. <laughs> They're all kind of hovering around here. Uh, they don't really spend a whole lot of time in here, so this is all pretty much clean and new. <laughs> we kind of have food for them. They like to hang out and roost on the bars, but unless somebody's in here, they don't spend tons of time in here. And I'm not sure why that is, uh, but we definitely have lots of extra bedding in here. If I take my hat off, I can feel the wind just a little bit. Um, but because these roosting bars are pretty much up here with me, it might be a little too drafty up here for them. In the summer, they were spending a lot of time in here, so that, that might be the case. When we have metal up, that'll fix that for the winter, and hopefully they'll use this more in the winter, give them more space, because we will have more chickens. So something I've noticed with the Grobterra versus some of the other ones, these have a much higher fat content. So these have much better nutrient base for your chickens, other than the, the stuff that you get from the store. It's just very dehydrated. 
And that's it. Here we go. There was your close up. Hang on. One of the things I've noticed is I want to show you. <laughs> Get chicken out of the way. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> the nutritional content of these things. Excuse me. Beep. So Grub Terra actually reached out to us and asked us to review their product um, in exchange for some free product. Just step on her head to get to it, Spec. No problem. And I was happy to do it because I've heard lots of good things about them. You can just tell as you saw with the close up with them, there's definitely a higher fat content in them and better protein and just better balance overall of all the nutrients in them. So I'm really happy with them. And they did give me a free coupon code for you guys if you want 10% off of your Grub Terra order. And I put it in the description box for you guys to check that out. Two more things I want to talk about with the deep litter method is one of those is how deep you want this. You ideally want to keep this about four to six inches. And that is to make sure that you've got a good balance with moisture. If you have too little, then you're going to have heavy moisture and that's going to give you a whole lot of problems to your flock give them respiratory problems, breathing problems. You're gonna have mold build up in here. It's just not a good situation. And too much, and it's gonna be kind of dusty. And I learned that from last year, we put too much in there and it was really dusty in there. I mean, over time it was fine, it balanced itself out, but I went both directions last year. We did too little and then too much. And eventually by the end of the year, we got figured out what was the best for our flock. The last thing I wanna talk about is what it looks like when you're done. This is the bedding that we had in here that is composted down from last year. And it's cold, I mean, it's February, so it's kind of frozen. But look at that, that is gonna be great, great compost that is gonna go in our garden this year. Now, I have seen that some people like to just take their, their compost that they use straight out of their chicken coop and put it right onto their garden in the spring. I feel like that is a hot, that's a hot manure. That, that is something, that needs to be broken down. You're gonna burn your plants. You could have some bacteria issues. So really, I mean, for me, my personal belief is you wanna let this sit a season and then you can put it on. So the stuff that comes out of our coop this winter in a couple months when I clean it out, that is gonna go into this um, after I get this cleaned out. This is gonna go onto the garden. Then I'll put that stuff in here. And then for the following year, that'll be our mold. We're gonna hide against the house here from the wind. Um, so like I said, this is our second year overwintering chickens, keeping them without any electricity, without any heat or anything, and the deep bedding works really, really well. I am not gonna change that. Even when we are living out here next winter, I am not gonna change how we do that. I'm not adding heat to my coop. I'm not gonna change the deep bedding system. I really, really enjoy it. If anything, we're just gonna expand it when we expand our flock. So if this is something that you were considering but didn't really have enough information about it or was kind of, not real sure if you want to do it or not. I hope this helps you make your decision and I hope you give it a try if it's right for your area. One last thing I do want to add is the deep bedding method is not suitable for all areas. Uh, I do know some people that live out west in like the Pacific Northwest area. They just have such a high humidity and moisture content. They get so much rain. It doesn't work for their area, so they can't do that. Uh, I would imagine down south when you have to worry about termites and fire ants and again, lots and lots of moisture, it might not be a good, a good option for you, but who knows? There's people that do some amazing things in their area that you really wouldn't think that they would do. So if this is something that you're considering for your chicken coop, definitely look into your specific area to see if this is gonna work for you. So that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to see what we're up to next and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.